Slap lesions are quite uncommon lesions and nowadays we know that they are much less common than what was initially proposed about 10 or maybe 12 years ago. Slap lesions can occur in the shoulder in two different populations. So the first one, the first group is the one composed by young patients, generally male, usually before 40 years old, when these patients have a very well defined trauma event onto his shoulder. So the slap is caused by a fall onto an outstretched arm during sports activity, just like the fall that we are seeing here in this photo. Obviously, a fall like this can happen in any sports activity and still, even a fall like this can happen accidentally. But generally, the fall is related to some kind of sports participation. Also, in the second uh, population, we have the overhead athletes and they develop this lab due, due to the repetitive so-called peel-back mechanism in sports activities, in, in sports modalities like baseball, volleyball, handball, basketball and even others. So in this present case I'm showing a, 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 a case about a 23 year old male who is a professional soccer player in Brazil. He had a fall in January 2013 during a professional soccer match onto his outstretched left arm. He felt intense pain in his left shoulder just after the trauma and he had to immediately leave that soccer match in, in which he was playing. He was so taken to emergency room and some x-rays were taken revealing absolutely no abnormalities. He was told so by the doctor who saw him that he had a simple shoulder contusion and he was given nothing but ice, rest and some painkillers. But since then he started to feel pain in his left sh shoulder during his soccer games and he insistently complained that he felt that his sh shoulder war was quite loose when he was playing soccer. In spite of not having any shoulder dislocation in his medical history, he had a vague sensation that he could dislocate his shoulder. So after five months of, of, of complaints, five months after the, the trauma, he came to my, my office, this patient was sent to me, and he, has, he had absolutely no signs or not even symptoms of rotator cuff pathology. On physical exam, he had pain and some slight apprehension, especially in Job's relocation test. We asked for an, an MRI and the exam revealed a very large slab tear. And the slab tear, as we have seen here, had a continuity with a large bank tear also. Anyway, it's very important to say that usually in slab cases, the MRI images are not so clear as it was in this present case. Anyway, an arthroscopy was indicated and so this is his arthroscopy. So here we are, this is the left shoulder, here we are seeing the labrum and the very important tear in, in the root of the biceps, a very important tear indeed, and here we are seeing a large uh, bank tear also. So as usual we, we started to, to establish the anterior portal with a spinal needle and then we opened it, the capsule with a mosquito to enter with the, the anterior cannula. So now the cannula is, is inside the joint. And once we would have to perform a, a biceps tenotomy and a biceps tenodesis, we passed a, a whip stitch with a spinal needle with a number two proline suture through the biceps and we retrieved that out of the, the anterior cannula and then we started to pre perform the biceps uh, tenotomy that is supposed to be a very fast and simple procedure. So now the, the tenotomy is finished and here we can see a very large uh, bank art and slab lesion again and the labrum was literally falling into the glenohumeral joint in this case. So again with the spinal needle we established a good position for enter supralateral portal 
and then we very delicately very softly enter it with 11 blade and we open it the capsule to, to, to enter with the second cannula we enter it then with a mosquito to open the capsule and then we, we use the Visinger device to enter with the second, the second cannula so then with the second cannula in place we started to debride and to create a bony bed in the very anterior part of the glenoid just to fix the labrum and the bankard with the slap lesion and this is exactly what we are used to do in standard bankard repairs but in, the, in this case the difference is that we would have to, to, to go a, a little bit upper so now we are in something about one o'clock and now we are in the upper part of the glenoid just uh, creating a bony bed in which the, the label would be reattached. So here we, we can see again the labrum falling into the glenohumeral joint and the difficulty that we, we had to see the bankard itself. So with a, a, a simple uh, basket we removed something about two or three millimeters of the articular cartilage to put the first anchor as inferior as we could, this is something about the 5 o'clock position and here we are introducing a 3.0 monoloaded bio, bio absorbable anchor, this is an anchor from Limvatec and then at this moment we inverted the camera because it, we wanted to look as low as we could and through the anterior cannula we entered with a bird beak to pick up as much labor as we could and as inferior as we we could and here we are uh, we are uh, something about, uh, about the six o'clock position so for the enter superlateral portal we we use it a suture manipulator to bring the sutures to that very inf inferior bird beak and in a retrograde fashion we pass the first suture through the very inferior part of the the, the tear now we attain the first not putting on a lot of compression in order for the labor to heal in the bony bed that we had just created then the knot was cut and then we would have to, to, to put a second anchor here we have something ab about three or two o'clock uh, position when we are putting again a 3.0 mono loaded bioabsorbable anchor and once the anchor was in, in place through the anterior uh, portal, the anterior cannula, we enter with, with a bird beak as inferior as we could and in a retrograde fashion again we pass it the second suture through the labrum and here we attain through the anterior cannula the second knot. So here the, the knot is finished and at that moment we would have to put a third anchor in the very upper part of the glenoid to fix the slap itself. So now we uh, we are putting the anchor. This is a third anchor, and and again, bioabsorbable 3.0 monoloaded one. And in the same fashion, we enter it with a bird beak, and in a retrograde fashion, we pass it that suture out of the en the enter superior cannula. And here we attain the third suture from the third anchor. Here we, we can see that the knot was cut and at that moment we, we analyzed the, the construction and we decided to put a fourth anchor in something about 3 or 2 o'clock position to give a, a better fixation because this patient is very strong and is a professional athlete. And here we are, we are putting so the fourth anchor in something about 2 o'clock position. We again enter it through the anterior portal with a bird beak and in a retrograde fashion again we pass it and fix it the f and, and tie it the fourth suture. So this is the construct of the labrum, a bumper sticker fixing the slab and the bankard tear. At that moment we removed the camera from the posterior portal and we entered with the camera for the anterior cannula just to check that the posterior labrum was okay and it was 
he, the patient had no signs in physical exam of, of a posterior tear nor in the MRI and in fact the posterior labrum was okay so we came back to the, the posterior camera. So here we entering again for the posterior portal and now we see the, the biceps with the tenotomy and the whip stitch. So at that moment we enter it with the, the burr to create a bony bed in the lesser tuberosity just just up to do the subscapularis insertion in which we would tenodize the biceps with an intra-articular tenodize. So now we are, we are just uh, creating the bony bed and once the bony bed was created we entered it through the anterior portal with a 5.0 titanium anchor, a double loaded one. Once we found a good position we started to to insert it in the humeral head in lesser tuberosity and obviously it must be very well inserted to avoid all the problems that we do know so now we are checking that the anchor is being well inserted and once the anchor was in a good place and well inserted for the anterior supralateral cannula we entered with a suture manipulator to isolate the blue suture the, the two legs of the blue suture in the anterior supralateral portal. Then still for the anterior supralateral portal we enter it with a, a grasper and for the anterior portal we enter it with a simple bird beak and very gently very softly we pass the bird beak through the long head of the biceps and in a retrograde fashion again we pass it one leg of the blue sutures through the long head of the biceps and out of the anterior cannula. And for the anterior supralateral cannula, we enter it with a suture manipulator and we remove it, that leg that was passing through the biceps out of the anterior cannula and through the anterior supralateral cannula. And this is exactly what we are doing now. And here we can see that both legs of the blue suture were passing through the anterior supralateral cannula. And then we re repeated the procedure. So, through the anterostrupulateral cannula, we isolated one of the legs of the blue, the white suture, and again, we grasped the tendon, the long head of the biceps, through the anterostrupulateral cannula with a uh, grasper, and we passed it a spectrum device with a proline suture through the long head of the biceps through the anterior portal when we isolated that proline in the anterior superior lateral cannula and in, in a retrograde fashion we passed one leg of the white suture through the long head of the biceps. So at that moment we started to tie the knots. First the blue one through the anterior superior lateral cannula and this here we can see that we were putting a, a, a lot of compression and then the second one through the anterior cannula so now we are tying the second suture the white one through the anterior cannula and here we can see that we were really putting a, a, a lot of of compression in order for the tendon to heal and then we cut it. So here we see the final construct in here we can see as we internally and externally rotate the shoulder how stable was the biceps with the intra-articular you know, this is in the lesser tuberosity and here we can see again the, the final construct of the labrum repair with the bank art and this slab lesion very well fixed and so at that moment the surgery was then finished. Thank you.